used to call my favorite small time project because I was also working in that project before I did the mass stuff I spoke about yesterday. So that was a little bit very different from this. Uh, this uh, is also a very nice thing. And now you explain to us why it's so nice for the Okay, go ahead. I'm curious. So, uh, I had been working with Object Studio for a long time. Uh, it was called Infant Small Talk back when I started with a usual corporation. Um, of course, uh, Simcom acquired Object Studio in 1997. And uh, here we are today. Um, I hope that some of you got to see Arden's talk about Small Talk's second surge, because uh, it's something that we've really been feeling in the Object Studio group as well. Uh, there are long-time Object Studio customers who are starting up new projects uh, using Object Studio 8, and there's uh, interest from uh, all kinds of other small talkers as well. Uh, and it has led or uh, been led by a, a second surge in Object Studio small talk development as well. We, you know, I would say it was a very big uh, project for us, uh, larger than anything we've taken on in a long time. And we're staffing up other projects as well now. So, so it's a good, uh, good time to be here. Um, right. So I'll tell, uh, I'll say a little bit about Object Studio. Uh, it is a Windows uh, specific offering. Uh, we run on Microsoft Windows only, and so we uh, therefore have Windows native widgets. Uh, very tight Olay integration. Um, one of our traditional strengths is the uh, modeling and mapping tool, um, and as well as database support and kind of legacy application support. I think the, uh, the uh, summary would be this is something that's uh, it's a product that's always been targeted at business application developers. Just for corporate, um, if you heard Rob's uh, Rob presentation right now, that's probably the glue you're looking for. Right. Yeah? You got the mainframe, you got your AS400, you got your uh, ActiveX integration or OLED integration to Excel. Right. So here you go. So when we're making money in a couple of years from now. Well, that's the. <laughs> All right. I'm talking about the course. <laughs> <kind of stuff. laughs> Uh, but what I'm actually going to talk about today is the, uh, my, my part of today, is to talk about the Windows Vista certification project that we did. Uh, and so, why bother with Vista certification? Uh, definitely something that I asked myself a lot while we were doing it. Um, but we got a lot of good stuff out of it, I think. Uh, part of it was the, the quality experience. Um, was, uh, it's really improved things for us. Uh, we got it out to independent testers. Uh, Microsoft does not do their own testing for this. They, they farm it out to third parties that they certify to do the testing. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that it, it's uh, also so we're part of the WinQual process, uh, which is um, and the WR is the Windows Error Reporting. Um, you've probably you've all seen it when an application crashes. It asks you if you want to send information to. Remember, you've never seen that. <laughs> but now, send. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, it's uh, something that we can collect data with and hopefully help uh, um, help us find problems. Um, uh, yes, and so we're just uh, also getting up to date with Windows standards, things that we haven't looked at in a long time. Um, um, and there are also good business reasons for doing this. Uh, we increase visibility, we're in Windows Marketplace, uh, so people that click through the Windows Marketplace from the startup screen in Vista uh, and search for Smalltalk will find uh, not just to get a Smalltalk there. Um, and it is that kind of management checkbox uh, where uh, management looking for standards are starting to require or read about this stuff. And uh, in some cases, uh, for instance, we even have, we have uh, VSC users in Belgium, uh, 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 their management is looking for Vista. They want them to be moving on to a Vista certified product. Um, they want to be using Smalltalk as we all do. They want to keep the native, their native widget application. And uh, so they uh, Object Studio is a natural fit. Object Studio is a natural fit for them. Um, and uh, yeah, just to point out that some people really are looking for that certification. It's not enough to just to say that you support Vista. They want that kind of independent verification. 
So this is all that kind of, uh, as uh, Arden talked about in uh, the second search also, is that small talk advocacy. Uh, these are, this is the kind of thing that could be a tool for you to go to your management and sell, uh, and sell small talk. Okay, yeah, so what were the changes that we did uh, that were actually made to Object Studio? Well, the installer was completely revamped. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little more in a moment. Uh, of course, uh, we had external testers working on it. Um, <coughs> the, uh, just the simple bug fixes and improvements that we were able to put in because of what we found through the process. Um, and also the new uh, Windows Help format, you're not even uh, oddly, you're not even allowed to ship that HLP files for the Vista Certified product. Everything has to be converted to a CHM. Um, so the uh, Microsoft installer, that's, uh, that is a requirement for Vista certification. You must use MSI. Um, that doesn't mean you have to use Microsoft tools. Uh, we use Install Shield actually uh, to create our installer, but it has to generate an MSI installation. Uh, and this uh, this is something that I was personally really happy about, uh, not, not MSI in particular, but the testing uh, to verify, to guarantee that you've got a clean install and uninstall. And it's something that I know I always worry about if I want to install something and try it out, but I don't know really what's going to happen if I uninstall it. And am I really going to be able to get rid of it? Uh, so that's something that's guaranteed. With the, with Did you feel good about this one? Yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was hard going through it, I'll tell you. It's, uh, installers are not, just laying down files and setting registry settings anymore. There's, there's a lot more to it, but, uh, but it's good to be at the other end of it, that's for sure. Um, yeah, so uh, program files, uh, the read-only stuff has to be separated now. Uh, we do a per-machine installation. We played around with per-user installations a little bit with advertised shortcuts, um, triggering an install on demand so that uh, an image file and any files that the program the user modifiable stuff we can install for each user, and that didn't work out uh, as well as we wanted. And I think that we kind of took our cue from what Install Shield does as well. They install all their program files into the program files hierarchy, and they put uh, they create a separate directory off the roof for their projects. Um, only that is not allowed in Vista in the Vista certified world either. You can't create the directories, uh, so we had to lay down the uh, user modifiable files in the, in the appropriate place. Uh, on XP, that would be in the all users directory and on Windows and program. Um, uh, everything has to be signed, application code does, executables and DLLs. Uh, so that did mean that there were a few uh, third party DLLs that, that we weren't able to ship. And things that are part of the, the contributed part of uh, the visual works installation. So it's, Things that were not created by Syncom, so we couldn't sign them. Uh, the, I think there was an ISAPI DLL, and there was a, a, a tool for image compression, I believe. And so these are things that work fine, and if it's something that you need, you can get it from the Visual Works distribution uh, and, uh, and uh, just put it in. It wasn't a problem with its functioning, it was a problem that to be certified, you're not allowed to ship unsigned. Uh, the digital signature also kind of gives a comfort level, I think, to people. Also, if people are running in low, uh, low privileged user accounts in Vista that, uh, that are required to run only signed trusted code, uh, this gives them that, that the, uh, the manifest, we have to manifest the execution too. So that used to be separate. And now the manifest that gives you access to the newer updated XP log is, is uh, part of Object Studio. <coughs> uh, so uh, the tools, uh, the testing that we did, um, Included, uh, we use uh, the Orca tool that provided by Microsoft, which is just uh, an installer verification tool. It, runs, it helps you look at the uh, MSI file that we create uh, and does some sanity checks to make sure that everything everything looks, uh, looks good. To, uh, there's a restart manager tool that we, we had to make a small change uh, for that. When you shut down Object Studio right now, it says, do you really want to log out? Is that kind of a question before it closes? And uh, if the system is requesting a, a shutdown because, for instance, if a service maybe has failed and needs to, the machine needs to restart, uh, then it will require to shut down silently. So we had to, that was just one of the other things we had to handle. Um, 
The best tool is the application verifier. What this does is it, it hooks the Windows APIs and um, watches your program as it's running. It's kind of like if anybody remembers Bounce Checker. It's kind of like what that used to do. Um, so it, uh, it actually surfaced some old bugs or potential bugs that have been around forever. And there was even one in the inspector, uh, which you'd think would be a pretty well exercised part of the product. But, uh, but uh, absolutely, the Object Studio Inspector uses a tree view, and uh, this is just a Windows API usage question. Uh, you're supposed to delete the image list after deleting the window handle from the tree view, and we were doing it in the reverse order. Um, and it's uh, just one of those kind of API things where you can get away with it uh, most of the time. Although oddly, we had this did surface on a, on a different machine independently. At the same time that we, uh, right around the same time we found it, through the certification testing. So, so just little things like that that we were able to find and, and uh, fix and, uh, you know, bring things up a little bit. Uh, all right, so, uh, you know, Object Studio is an application development environment. It's, uh, it's impossible to test everything, so it was given them scripts to work from, and uh, they did their testing, I guess, the point I wanted to make here was that uh, things haven't been restricted. Um, you can still, you know, in small talk, you can do anything. You can still crash the VM. You can still use DLS and C calls to do uh, inappropriate things and you know, kill, kill the executable. Uh, so uh, nothing's changed in that way. Nothing's been restricted. Uh, it's just to uh, you know, improve the uh, quality experience. We're you know, very happy to be the proud and happy to be the first uh, first to serve that small part. So I guess I'll ask if there are any questions about the business certification stuff in particular before I pass it on. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, well, yeah. So if you uh, saw the web velocity presentation earlier, uh, I actually spoke about the. Uh, modeling the uh, web velocity beta program after what we did for Project CU8. So this was uh, very successful, I think. And um, so I want to introduce uh, Andreas Hilder, who was the, who was the uh, project lead, project lead for Project Studio 8. Uh, and he's going to talk a little bit more about what we did in the OSIC beta in a second. Thanks, Mark. <coughs> so, um, you see, I'm not here just to, to switch the slides. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. But you, you did a great job. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well done. All right. Uh, so the, the beta cycle that we did with Option Studio was the first one at, at Syncom for or for Syncom's model for a very long time. Ever. And Ever. Ever. And um, we just had the impression that uh, Object Studio is something that we really, uh, really want to get done right. Um, they haven't been done very much for the Object Studio community in a, in a very long time. And so we would like to have this project get it done right, get it into everybody's hands that really uh, everybody can see how powerful Object Studio really is now with this um, virtual machine uh, from, from Visual as well. So I just want to talk a little bit about the reason for the project. Uh, Georg gave a presentation last year, I believe, and uh, at, at ESOC about Object Studio 8. Um, two years ago? Okay. Um, then I want to talk about the, a little bit of the setup of the, uh, of the beta program and some feedback from the beta partners and just a little bit of a short summary. So the reason for the project was really just to get uh, the benefits. Um, the Object Studio customers would get all the benefits from what the Visual Works customers had over the years before. We had a lot of improvements, um, make a web toolkit or now the seaside and everything, and nothing really was done for the Object Studio uh, community. Uh, now with the with Object Studio 8, you get the benefit from Object Studio, you can upgrade um, very easily. That was the, the, the highest priority on the whole, on the whole project. Uh, but still, you get the whole power from from VisualWorks and all the additional uh, additional libraries. So um, 
I don't know how many of you ever worked with Object Studio. I mean, don't know, maybe Giorgio, Georg, of course. You did? Okay. You did too? All right. Um, you know, uh, Object Studio was uh, considered always very slow. Uh, it was a very slow virtual machine. And now we have the, the power of the visual work virtual machine uh, on the cloud. Uh, that helps a lot, uh, only on the small execution side. But I can come back to that in a minute. So we get superior speed in the, in the small bug execution. We get the, the garbage collect, which we always had trouble with. If, if you remember that uh, uh, sometimes we were complaining, you had uh, about a half a second or so, the whole small bug execution just stopped because uh, object studio was garbage collecting. And uh, as I said, the interaction with all the existing tools and frameworks of, of, of visual works. So that was the the real reason for the whole for the whole project. Um, one reason that we uh, we try to sell uh, our management on was the reduced maintenance cost, which is not really true because right now we still support Object Studio Classic, so with the old VM and everything. Uh, so instead of reducing our maintenance burden, we actually doubled it. So in German, I would say Eigentor. <laughs> So the setup of the beta program, we were actually looking for customers and individuals uh, who were willing to spend a non-trivial amount of time uh, to give us the feedback. Um, actually, one of the participants is, is here. Alan, say hi. <laughs> so, um, and everybody who knows who, who takes the beta program really serious knows that there is a lot of time that you need to put into. Um, it's nothing that you just play with it for two or three hours, and then to just send back and say, oh, it doesn't work, go back to, to design phase. So it is really, it was an incremental process, and um, we were looking for customers and individuals who had really time at their hand and were willing to spend this time, their copious, precious spare time, to, uh, to help us develop it and get it right. So, um, our first customer uh, is the fifth largest bank here in the United States. I'm sorry, I'm still not allowed to say the name. There was some administrative hiccup, or how you want to call it, I don't know. Uh, but they used Object Studio 8, the beta product, Object Studio 8, to develop a new program, uh, to develop a new application. So they had this level of trust into us, into the team, into Syncom, to say, we start out with a beta pro, uh, application and develop a new program, a new application for us that we use. Um, we had two other customers, one in Switzerland and one in Germany. Um, uh, the uh, uh helped both of them with, with uh, consulting there. And then we had um, not even a handful, but uh, some individuals who spent their, their focus, precious spare time to, uh, to help us out here as well. So, um, what did we do for this fifth large bank? Uh, basically, not really much. We pushed them into the cold water and say, swim or sink. <laughs> so we did a three-day installation and, and, and training for Object Studio 8. Luckily, uh, the, the team consisted of people who knew VisualWorks and Object Studio. I mean, individuals who knew VisualWorks and some other individuals who knew Object Studio. So now they could work together, uh, which was pretty interesting in, in, in times uh, to see the different development styles of the VisualWorks people and the Object Studio people, where the Object Studio is more hands-on, pragmatic, and okay, it will work, uh, I don't care. And the other side is, no, 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 you have to abstract this into a new super class and, have, uh, and, and design by the book. And then <coughs> with Object Studio 8, those two worlds Clash. <laughs> all of a sudden, it's like, all right. But it worked out very nice. So um, they were on the beta program for, from day one, and we started a conference call once a week just to hear what it, how it was going on, uh, the progress they had, the problems they had. And um, pretty early in the, in the beta cycle, they told us uh, our management forces us uh, or we have to release in September. So it would be nice if you could release your product by August. And we were saying, well, hang on, wait a second. Um, 
we have no idea how long this paper edit program is going to last because we have no idea how, what obstacles that we encounter. And then they said, okay, then sorry, but we need to have a fixed date, at least down to the week, down to the month at first. Yes. So and then we said, okay, we are pretty confident we, that we can we can manage it, and we have good people. And so far, nothing had come up. And actually, we said, okay, no, I'm I'm sure we can manage it. We we do it by by August, no problem. Yeah, you go to tell your management, we can do it, and uh, we promise that we do it, and we don't uh, let you have uh, we don't hang you out to dry. All right. So and they they believe us and continue with that. And um, actually, we. It was. It worked out great. It worked out. We had the, the release in time. We did not get the CT, CCD, but you had the release and everything. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that that. I was the person with that fifth largest bank, and it did work well. That was key. To our, we took a gamble and we won. For the first, it was about a nine-month project, one-year project. For the first two to three months, we it was important to have a back-out plan. But if we had to to back out of this. We could, we could revert back and play the lot of the But after a couple of months, we threw away the back out line we were confident enough that we were going charge for you. And it turned out that uh, we did ship in nine months, sitting on Beatles. And, yeah. and, uh, but it, it, that was key. That yes. key. Yeah. So customer two and three came on a little later in the, in the beta cycle. Um, they were existing objects due to customers. And they were saying, OK, we are interested in help you out. Um, we need a consultant. Uh, to help us upgrade our existing uh, existing applications to Object Studio 8. Um, um, as what I saw from, from the emails and everything was basically just a five day, day of training, an overview of Object Studio 8 from your, from your guys. Um, and then basically a consulting, uh, uh, the next three weeks was a, a hand holding and upgrading job. Um, the source code was only store and uh, so project management was installed and everything um, and after those after this time four weeks altogether it was done it was fully tested after the first week actually the the, the whole application worked they had some, some some minor glitches in there but the whole application worked by the end of the first week and then it took them about another week to work out all the glitches and then they said okay we, we still need to test about uh, for an hour another week before we can tell management that we are really done. So overall, uh, it was, I would say, two mid-sized applications. And um, it was, for the Object Studio applications tend to have many less classes than the, than the Visual Works applications have. So they had about 320 classes, uh, probably about 50 or 60 user interfaces, uh, database lookup and about uh, around thousand classes that they extended, and, there's all, and this stuff was done within within four weeks. So the most dangerous part was really the class extensions, because they did always do some tricky stuff there. So we were actually actually pretty happy about that. Um, the beta program itself, how we did it was that. We had uh, e emails about specific problems. So, uh, for the beta program, whoever chose to be part of the beta program had access to the developers themselves. So, so you knew it did not have to go through support and regular support channels. And now that's probably a, sometimes a long and tedious process. But um, beta customers really had access to the developers, developers themselves and just can shoot them an email. Okay, what were you thinking when you coded this? Um, we had the scheduled conference for all once a week. Um, we had a mailing list, and the mailing list still exists for, for Object Studio 8, actually. So if uh, somebody wants to participate, you are always the path and progress of that is, is still existing. And we started an Object Studio blog. Um, the Object Studio blog is not a, by far not as regular as what James puts up, because uh, we just don't have the time to do that. I'm sorry. But uh, we try to, uh, to keep everybody up to date on what we're doing right now on the latest department techniques and uh, some tools that we think are helpful for development. Um, since we are Microsoft-centric, uh, Object Studio really run, only runs in Microsoft, all of the tools that we suggest or that we, that we use are 
either or <coughs> yeah, platform dependent basically. Yeah. So um, Linux users want to find Linux tips and tricks are not really they don't find anything helpful in that area. <coughs> so what feedback did we get from the from the data partners? Um, one big one was uh, pretty early on actually it said your UI is so darn slow we can't even use it and we said we threw the hands up in the air and said how can that happen we have this fantastic state-of-the-art VisualWorks virtual machine under our belt right now so how can it happen that the, that the user interface just is so slow and they told us and they showed us actually if you do this and if you open the, the object studio dialog uh, and, and the object studio window, you can see every single widget painted on the screen. <laughs> now you can do a handshake. Hello, Mr. Andrews Creo. Hello, Mr. Text Andrews. Yeah, and go yeah, down to the very last button. You can see painted. And we said, uh, okay, how, how can that happen? I mean, the VisualWorks VM is known to be one of the fastest modern VMs here on the planet. So until we find out, um, on Object Studio, we use a whole lot of primitives. And exactly, these, these primitives gave us, gave us the headache here. Because the, the VisualWorks engine is very highly optimized towards execution of Smalltalk. But if you, if you go outside of Smalltalk, there are so many background checks, so, uh, sanity checks, um, things that you have to set up for garbage collect and, and back and forth, that it's about 100 times slower to call a single primitive from VisualWorks than, you, than it is from, from Object Studio side. So we said, okay, um, if we kind of fix that, then we have a big problem. So uh, one item, one thing that we always uh, use quite frequently is the form item set options too. Yeah, uh, is it visible, is it not visible, uh, things like that. So just options, Windows options that we had to set since we're using the native widgets. Uh, that we had to tell Windows directly. Um, and this was 100 times slow. So we, we, First, we optimized the, the procedure, how to get, uh, uh, how to call the, the object studio primitives. Second, we went to a great deal of optimization to mm, make the set options too, not to be a primitive anymore. So there are some things that we had to rewrite and to go through some hoops and, and stuff to really make sure that we have as little primitives as possible and we don't call them in loops anymore and, and, and stuff like that. All the things that we didn't consider before in Object Studio because it was just fast like hell and, and it just worked. So we had to do a major optimization and it was not at the end of the, uh, of the development cycle as you should do the optimization. It was right in the middle of the optimization because people said we cannot use it, we cannot use the upgrade so the beta program would, would fail and the whole project with it, so we had to do it right at that time. Another nice thing was to, when you had the refactoring browser open in, in, in VisualWorks and you loaded uh, the process from store, it had ages. It really, you could see a noticeable difference. Well, noticeable, I mean, you could go downstairs, grow your own coffee, grind it, <laughs> go back upstairs and, and have a cup of coffee um, until the stuff loaded. And that was with a local database. That was not even with a remote database. Those was a local database. Until Georg found out that we call that the, the reading system is called every single time a class is loaded into from store into the um, into the system, and the refactoring browser does a ton of update, and which triggers another reading system, which does a ton of update, and so on. So we had to to tell. Um, Basically, we had, what we had to do was uh, write some changes to the visual workspace to say, okay, um, we suppress the, the relic system for now, all the way down to um, you basically just a block, yeah? Um, beginning of the block, we, we start, uh, we suppress the update, we load the stuff, and then we have to ensure what to, uh, to turn it back on, basically, to get the standard behavior. But it was. This is now also part of 7.6. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So it was just, we saw it. We saw it first. <laughs> <laughs> so um, other partners wanted to have 
more common functionality between Object Studio and VisualWorks, which is uh, a good thing per se. Uh, the only problem was that the, the customers upgrading from an existing Object Studio application would need to put in more work. And right now, what we need, what we want to do is we want to encourage all the Object Studio users to really upgrade to Object Studio 8 and therefore make the upgrade path as painless as possible. So we cannot do all the nice things and all the, cannot take care of the anti standard right now. It will come. It will come. In a f but we have to have to, we have the politics of the small steps right now, of incremental steps. So there will be out here Object Studio 8 or 9 or whatever that's called at this time, full anti compliant, but there is a way to get there with some tools maybe and, and something like that. I don't know yet. But right now it is not uh, it is not anti-compliant um, as so we have some uh, some overrides uh, to visual works um, it's funny to see the the difference is when you execute something in the, in the visual works workspace and you execute it in the same image execute it on the object studio workspace and you get a totally different result to the same object to the same object yeah Good. So it's the same message, the two workspaces to the same object. Yeah. It's different business. So it's, but, yeah, but, well, yeah, you can only show this in small business before we sure. But uh, this was really, uh, we have to have an upgrade path right now for existing applications, really because we want to encourage everybody, every object to use it to do the upgrade. And knowing a couple of the users, they have, enough trouble to upgrade to Object Studio 8 with all the tiny little changes they do to the system and uh, overrides they already have in the system. Um, so we don't want to add any more to their headache or they already have. So, but we didn't just reject everything what they, what they told us. We just said, um, okay, we said so added several suggestions from our partners here. So uh, the list view, uh, something like grid control, uh, you'll probably know on the visual work side. Uh, you can set now every single cell to a different foreground and a different background color. It cost, uh, cost uh, quite some headache, but you guys wanted it, and so we tried to, to do that for you. Another thing was, um, whenever you open up Object Studio 8, uh, you get the open Object Studio 8 launcher, not the visual works launcher uh, uh, by default. So you really had no access to all the parcels. Because we had Object Studio, we had the Object Studio applications that were, that were in there. Um, so a customer said, um, How are we supposed to, to, to load the, uh, all the parcels that are out there? I want to try out Seaside, I want to try out uh, all the other nice things. So we said, Okay, um, loadable application dialog, the, the one that we already have, we extended that, put on the button for uh, to load the parcel, and then open the parcel manager for you. It's already there, so why don't why don't use it? So um, access to the Visual Works Inspector from the from the Object Studio workspace. We had this problem with the with the tree inspector Mark uh, Mark talked earlier about, uh, and for some time we didn't have an inspector because um, for some reason it, it was crashing all the time. Since we applied a new rule, I believe it started with some service pack from on Windows X. I don't know, what it is. but started to crash. So for some time we didn't have an inspector. So the customer said, no, that's not going to fly. Uh, we need an inspector. So you better make sure that we get some kind of inspector and Tribu was there. So you have the same shortcut. Yeah? On the, what's the shortcut for, for, for the inspector on, on VisualWorks workspace? Control Q. Yeah. Already asleep? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, since it did not conflict with the, with the shortcuts that we have on, on the Object Studio workspace, we also made it Control Q. Now you select it, click Control Q, and you, you get tripped. So it's, it's, uh, it's the same thing. Um, our customers didn't all, always report problems to us. Um, they reported problems and gave us bug fixes. And that was so great. Uh, I have to say I'm so grateful about that. Uh, so they did not only indirectly influence the whole uh, development of the beta uh, the, of the product itself, but also had more direct influence in the in the product itself to say those areas. Okay, that is my code. 
So they contributed to the to the product themselves, and uh, we were glad to take it. Yeah. So they had they had valid reasons to and, and, and usually just the right fix for them. Now overall, the beta program was very successful that we had. It would have not be possible without the customers and without their dedication um, that we had. It was really fantastic to have this beta program have the opportunity to work with some very talented people with some great organizations. And um, maybe we can repeat this experience again with some other people in the future. Any questions? Some similarities with the stuff that you need uh, because the, the laws are on a constant flow and they, they, they change really yeah, and, quite often. Yeah, they have this interesting situation that the state provides the software, and the city sets the laws. Yes. So each single individual city has a different set of so rules. They have basically have one, one standard application they get out, and then for every city can, can customize it the, the way they want it, and they put in the rules. That they wanted. So, um, uh, the last one in Switzerland, I. Insurance. It was an insurance, I know. Life, I don't, life insurance. Yeah, I don't know very much about that one. But again, I mean, life insurance is, is the same thing. It, it, it's on the flow, and regulation change constantly. Uh, and I think that's where the smoke really excels. And we really see a lot of our, a lot of our your customers are in our banking customers. Uh, or we have government in, in Europe, we also have government agencies in the United States using for similar types of applications. So if you look at the general different smart up markets, they have different characteristics because the original way the products were created had different approaches. While VisualWorks and Squeak are going to be very, 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 because they reside from the from the research lab. So you can do everything with it, including research. Our other products, like an infant object studio, is more towards a very, very fancy 4GL kind of application. So they came with all kinds of UI and modeling and uh, UI builder at times where the other smarters did that. And so they, they went directly to that corporate uh, market. And it still is the case because uh, where the roots are, you stay. Uh, Rob, you were saying that uh, or before that Excel is your domain specific language. Mm -hmm. your, um, if you want to ask Mark, Object Studio for my entry started at what? Yeah, that was a scratch. Yeah, that was a scratch. It was not even, uh, there was a language called Infantile. Just small time life, but not quite the same. It was conceived as a as a super functional spreadsheet. So we know where you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Any questions? Um, you said um, the uh, 
like you were using the, the visual works inspector type of a thing. If you have like since it's a Windows only product and it's using native widgets, can you use like the visual works owner drawn? Like if you bring something else in, does it does it render its windows always in native windows? Yes. Like if someone else wrote if you pulled in some other parcel that renders windows and everything, does the Optic Studio know how to draw them in native windows things or does it do owner drawn? No, we do our work. own things. We have our own GUI library. But they uh, can coexist. We, okay. They can coexist. So they you can have, have in the same window. So. Yes, that's not going to work. So you can't have that in the same window. So you have a, an Object Studio window and you can have the, the visual works window. At this open at the same okay. time, they can talk to each other. But you cannot have an, an, um, Visual Works widget on an Object Studio. Yeah, I was just like to get two different windows. Right? Yes, that, that's no problem. That's no problem at all. All right, then thank you very much.